Hello everyone, I don't know why but TDS has been updating a lot and that's a good thing. As you can see I'm dressed for it. So I expect good things to come in this update. You may ask, how do I get the new name tag and scout skin and tokens and the ticks? Well, the tokens themselves, you get them by winning the games. But the ticks, they're littered around the map, so you gotta find all 10 of them. But for the guest skin though, you gotta beat every single event map. This is Candy Lane, a very old map from TDS. If you didn't know, this map was removed in October 2019, which is a very long time ago. So this map is basically bubblegum colors like pink and ruby and so on and it has one straight lane right down the middle which at the time made it one of the hardest maps to beat so in this map you get scout sniper demo man soldier and paintballer all of these towers are pretty much not that good except sniper and soldier maybe the demo man but if i were you i would just recommend spamming soldier as that's the strategy i used and as you can see it got me pretty pretty much to the end and might as well, while we're defending, I'll just tell you the lore about this event. And basically, 1x1x1 just came back and decided to hack Roblox and he kidnapped Commander. And in the end, we're trying to send him back. And we never got Commander back, I guess. I don't know. As you can see, we're nearing the end and, well, that's the Grave Digger. And as you can see, he only has 8,000 HP. So it should be pretty easy for these soldiers just to kill him. And in fact, they did. The next map is Winter. This was also an old TDS map that was removed on October of 2020, which is almost five years ago, which was made by Beef Choplets, a developer of Evade. As you can see, this map is themed around Winter, and the layout is in a weird S shape. The title of this objective is called The Return of Core Blocks, so we're going to be fighting some reused enemies from the hunt. The five towers that are given to us are Military Base, Militant, Cryo, Crook Boss, and Sniper. The two towers I recommend only using is Crook Boss for the beginning and Military Base for the end game. The rest of the towers are practically useless unless you want to use them of course. Um, that's a bit more intense than it actually is. It's really easy to beat, if you guys didn't know. It sucks that it's a reused boss, but, you know, at least you can beat it faster now. I would have been happy if it was like an actual noob walking out, but... For the life of me, I don't know why they made this map so hard. For the people who don't know, this map is called Forest Camp, and I know you recognize the name, and it's because this map exists. It's a brand new version of it. So yeah, we're gonna be playing the one that's 5 years old. Pretty cool fact, there's actually 5 different versions of this map. So I guess Below Natural couldn't make up his mind until now. Talking about Below Natural, he's actually the one that made this map. Well, the first version at least. And also the third one. Now, when you hover over this map, the mission is called The Clash at Forest Camp. And the clash it is. The amount of times I lost doing this is kind of crazy. Now the map design is basically an inverted S, so similar to Winter, except a bit longer. And if you ask me, this does not look like the new one at all. I wouldn't even recognize it. But anyways, for your loadout, you get Cowboy, Militant, Pyro, Mortar, and Minigunner, which is a pretty good loadout, compared to previous loadouts at least. But that also means that the difficulty is a lot harder. My advice is that you place this Mortar in this one tower here, and make sure you can fit a second one there for later on. And then, once you upgraded your mortar, also place a militant. Upgrade your mortar one time, and then save up for a minigunner. After the minigunner, you want to place your second mortar on the same tower. Make sure you set both to strongest, and then from there you just spam minigunners and upgrade them, and just upgrade the rest of your towers, and then you should be fine. But of course, this is definitely not the easiest way to beat this map. I'm sure you can search something up on YouTube, but this is how I did it. But on the boss wave, it was kind of disappointing. I was actually expecting like a better boss since the first boss was Gravedigger, the second boss was Core Blocks. So the third one I thought it would be something different. Maybe like 
Swordmaster from the first event or Raider, but nope, it's actually Gravedigger again with more health this time. <laughs> kind of disappointing. Before third map, sure as heck did it get me ready for the next one. Island Chaos. I haven't heard of this map for a while, but after doing mission 3, you expect this one to be harder. The mission title is called Tropical Turmoil, and it sure is nice to hear the nice beach waves after the stressful forest camp. Just kidding, there's no audio. But after doing this, I could assure you, this was a lot easier than Mission 3 was. The map looks really short, but you get a lot of range from around this circle. And you got pretty nice starter towers. Warden is what I recommend, but you can manage with Soldier as well. After the third or second wave, you get a lot of bonus money. So you can get a mini gunner and a commander on the side. And basically you can spam mini gunners, spam pursuit, and if you want to, it'll be a lot easier. Just do commander chaining. It will definitely guarantee that win for you. And the bots here? Get ready to be disappointed. It's the core block's death speaker. Who would have thought? This time it has 30,000 HP. So a little bit more than last time, but you can do better below natural. I know you. But yeah, easy win. You can win this in the first try. Now, if you made it here to this point of the video, might as well sub, I'll give you a cookie. The last mission is mission 5. The map is called Castle, and objective name Castle Siege, which is a pretty epic name if you ask me. And it was also removed 5 years ago. So yeah, just like the fate of the other 4 maps. This map, the path is a bit longer, and it goes around more, so you can get actually more range on your towers, which makes it pretty much more easier than the other maps. And they're pretty generous with the towers they give you. Golden Scout, Engineer, Accelerator, Ranger, and Mortar? That's a lot of DPS. And they're more generous with their wave bonuses. Like, I got a hundred thousand. It's like they ran out of time developing this and be like, meh, just give him a hundred thousand. Oh, and also, just throw in the Fallen King, because why not? I feel like that's what's going on at Paradox in Games Office. But hey, I'm not complaining. I'm happy that we got an event. Anyways, the strategy for this is basically defend with scout for the first two waves and then you can get accelerator with the money you saved up. And from there you just keep spamming accelerator and keep spamming rangers. And then finally you get to fight the boss, Corblox Death Speaker. And then they bamboozle you. But the actual final boss is the Fallen King. And it's pretty easy to beat. As you can see, my one accelerator saved us from dying. Just ignore the rangers, and as soon as you triumph, you get a whopping 37 XP. But who cares about the XP? We wanted the skin, the name tag, the tokens, and the coins. And if you ask me, this is my favorite name tag. And the scout skin? I felt like I fell in love. But there is one more thing I need to do. Collect all 10 tickets. So apparently there's one on this pole, and yep, I see it. Nice. And one behind the statue that I already got. And one in this elevator and I think I got that too. Of course I got the one behind the portal. And there's one all the way in the back right here. Now the sixth ticket is in Candy Cane Lane and I picked that one up. It's supposed to be right beside this sign. And the one in Winter right behind this hill. And of course Forest Camp it's really obvious it was right beside this cave. I already got that one too. And the one on Island Chaos it's behind this cave. And of course the last one it's in a really obvious spot right in this corner on this map. And I got all of them. Yay! Now I could finally spend these tickets to get this very awesome help. Want to know the biggest flexes in TDS? Watch this video!